If you're looking for some creative inspiration to get you painting today, then I have another one of my small scale art pieces to share with you. And so this is the third one and it's the last piece as well in this little small scale art series. And you can find the other two via the links in the description in the cards and also under the video. But stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to show you all three pieces together so that you can see sort of more clearly what makes them an actual series. So as many of you know, I have kind of a thing for using acrylics like watercolours. I mean, I really love doing that. It's sort of great fun. Uh, one of the reasons I like doing that is because you can layer over the top with other water and it sort of makes it really easy because it just stays put. But I'm doing that again today. I've got acrylics here for this piece and I've used them throughout on all these three pieces in this series. Now I started with a big flat brush for this one like I did in that second project and then I could just immediately it wasn't fitting I didn't like how it was going so I swapped back onto the big round brush which is what I used in the first project and I just kind of like the flow of that a little bit more it just instantly felt better and I knew it was kind of the right swap to do I think the flat brush worked really well on the kind of background that I did in the second of these projects but for something like this where I want it to be a little bit more fluid and a little bit more flowing it works better with the round brush and I've been having fun with kind of making these rounded wispy flowy acrylic paint sort of marks uh, this is something that I've not really sort of done in any great detail so it's something I want to do a little bit more of and experiment with them some more. In fact I think this piece turned out even more sort of wispy and ephemeral, wait a minute, e ephemeral that's not the right word, ethereal that's the word. <laughs> so yeah it's a bit more sort of ethereal than I was expecting it to and I don't know if I'm just kind of expressing some sort of flowy side to my nature, <laughs> who knows. I think I'll have to explore it a little bit more and see what kind of looks I can get from it and maybe that will be another series like I was talking about last time and talking about last time thank you everyone who has been giving me suggestions on what I can do to celebrate my 10k subs milestone here on YouTube I can't believe it I'm coming up to 10,000 thank you everybody who has been supporting me thank you so much to my patrons for their support too I've got some ideas on how to celebrate this milestone and I definitely want to do a special video so I thought maybe you guys could help me pick what kind of video I do so it's poll time and I started a poll over on my channel community tab here on YouTube as a subscriber to my channel it should kind of pop up in your homepage feed but if it doesn't or if you're still not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber and you haven't found it, then go to my channel, click on the community tab and the poll will be there. And the community tab looks a bit like this if you're accessing YouTube through your browser or if you're in the YouTube app, then it looks like this and you might have to swipe across the tabs to find it on your phone. So what kind of video would you like to see? that's the question now I've got to cut some options and well I was thinking maybe we could do a step-by-step -step tutorial where you can layer and paint along with me or maybe you'd like to see how I put my videos together with a behind-the-scenes video or another video we could do is where you just you completely choose what project or what technique I do in the video and you can give me some suggestions as well on that poll and then another thought I had was maybe we could do a live chat and watch video so we could watch together and chat at the same time which is great fun to do and I'll do it a little bit longer than that first one I tried and we can just get a really good chat on. So once you finish watching this video then do go and take a look at the poll in the community tab and let me know what you'd like to see as that special 10k video. Or if it's easier then you can always just tell me in the comments below or reach out to me on the other social medias too I'm fine with that so just you know whatever's easiest for you guys so thanks in advance for your input and I'm really excited to see what you choose so for this project I mean, once I've done all that sort of lovely wispy color then it it's kind of been a while since I've used my dip pens and I thought I would 
have a go with my dip pens again. So like, I love using dip pens, they're great fun and it's just a really sort of immediate way of adding line and pattern to a piece, I think. I think there's something really raw about dip pens. Is that just me? Anyway, I have a few different types. So I have, you know, the nibs, the, the nibs on, on a holder and then I've got a bamboo pen as well. But I thought I'd go with my glass pen, which gives a lovely thin line. And I thought it would work really well with these circles and patterns that I'm putting here and you sort of like, I can vary how thick the line is and you know cover, cover up some of my more wobbly lines with thicker lines just by going back over the area. And that adds a lovely variation to it as well. And I think it kind of matches quite nicely with that white pattern from the paint pen. And the thing about paint pens is, I don't know, it looks a lot more ordered to me, whereas a dip pen, you know, it's a little bit more wobbly, a little bit more sort of free. Well, at least in my hands anyway, that could just be me. <laughs> So again, I mounted this small scale piece on craft card to complete the series and check out the first card in the series if you want to know how I mounted this onto the card base. And I really do like how that brush work kind of works and how the pen, the two different types of pens work on this piece. So if we have a look at all three pieces in the series together, what do you think? They all have some common features, don't they? And they all have some differences too. So I hope you sort of like have fun picking out what you think makes this a series, for you at least. So I have some more mixed media inspiration to help you get creative. So watch these videos next and I will see you there. And thanks so much in advance for your input on what video I should do to celebrate my 10,000 subbies here on YouTube.